want to welcome you all to the Rock Church in Riverside. Amen. Are you having fun here in church? You could do better than that. Come on. Are you having fun here at church? <laughs> no, I'm Pastor Rocky. I'm the worship leader here. And we are excited that you have come this morning to worship the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Amen.
how many of you know that our response is just a response to how much love that he pours into our life? Amen. It's like somebody asked me, what does worship mean to you? Because you get up there and you just, I mean, you, you're just out of control. And it's like, worship to me is he loved me so much that he died on the cross. And my response, if it's getting crazy up here and screaming and shouting and just raising my arms and my hands and my voice to Him, that's the response that I can give. That's the response that we should all want to give. Amen. So all over this place, let's just all raise our hands to Him. We worship you, Jesus. Oh, yes, we love you, Lord.
This morning I was a broken mess on the floor crying out to a God that I wasn't even sure that I believed in anymore. Full of addiction and shame and guilt and full of anxiety and fear. I tell you what, I'm thankful for what God did for me. I'm thankful. And I just, I'm, I'm thankful to be in a house this morning where I know I'm in good company. Amen. That many of us are just thankful for what our Savior has done. Well, praise God. We want to welcome you this morning to the Rock Church Riverside. We want you to know we love you. And if it is your first time, we always have our church motto up on the screen. It is loving people to life. And that is the heartbeat of this church. Why? That's what Jesus came to do. He didn't come to destroy anyone, to condemn anyone. He came and he gave his life that we might have life and that more abundantly. Amen. That we might be set free by the power of God. So, if this is your first time here, we want to let you know in front of your chairs there are first time visitor cards and those are there for three reasons. You can let us know how you found us. You can write down any comments. Most importantly, if you have a prayer need in this house, we have the most awesome prayer team. You know, even this morning, it's not our normal time that we send out prayer requests. We send out our prayer requests on Monday and on Thursday following our services, but they are on it all the time. They hear of a need just this morning on the way to church. We heard of a young man that was in a car accident and he has, uh, needs right. prayer for surgery. We're lifting him on the way to church, just believing God for his life. So our prayer team is on it, and we are praying continuously. And the good news is we are seeing the most amazing answers to prayer. No matter what your need is in this house, do not think that your need is
it is impossible. The Word of God says nothing, nothing, say nothing. Nothing. Nothing is impossible to those who believe. Nothing means nothing. Nothing is impossible. And we believe God in this place and we have seen the absolute miraculous in this house. So I want to encourage you. If you have a need, you can fill out that card during any time during the service. And then later in the service, we're going to take up offering. We'll be passing buckets through. You can just drop it in there. And tomorrow, our prayer team is going to be lifting your need before the Lord. And we are just excited to do that. And just uh, ask that you will give us that praise report when you get it. Amen. Praise God. So right now, why don't we just have to take a seat. Amen. We are going to go right into our communion service. Amen. If you receive, should have received. Where's my cubicle? Oh. If you should have received one of these uh, 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 communion cups today, for those that have not used one of these, you peel back the plastic hard piece last, okay? So you're going to peel back the, the, the cellophane part first, and then we're going to peel back the plastic part, and we're gonna, just going to read a short scriptures, and then we're going to go into communion. How many know it's good to take communion, amen? You don't have to take communion just at church. I want to encourage you, you can take communion at at home, you can take communion by yourself, with your husband, with your wife, with your spouse, with your friends, uh, uh, gathering together, amen. Imagine that, going to someone's house and uh, for a fellowship and they say, hey, why don't we take communion first, amen. That, that'll, that'll be a winner for you, amen. And so as we take communion, it's very important that as we do communion, the Bible says that we should not take communion in an unworthy manner, and that if we are uh, not discerning the Lord's body, in other words, when we take communion, it ought to be a respectful thing to the Lord, amen? It ought to be something special to you, not just something we just, you know, get up in the morning and, and, and uh, or, or get in a little group with somebody and just kind of play around and, and take communion. It ought to be respected. It ought to be something that's important. But more than that, it ought to be something that means something real to you, more than just juice and a, and a little wafer and a religious ritual that we do. That's why a lot of times the Bible, the, you know, the Word of God says, do this in remembrance of me, but whoever does this in an unworthy manner, not discerning the Lord's body. In other words, you're taking something that was real, that was powerful, that heals, that delivers, that, that cleanses, that washes, and we turn it into a religious ritual that and some people will take this communion thinking they're going to be right with God. But, when, but how many know communion doesn't make you right with God? It's a response to being right with God. Amen? And so we want to make sure before we take communion, that, that we want to make sure everybody has, is, is right with God so that this will mean something special to you. That we're not doing it in an unworthy manner. We're not, doing, not discerning the, what the Lord has done for us and just saying, well, I could just do religious acts. Religious acts doesn't get you right with God. Being born again gets you right with God. Repenting of your sins and inviting them into your heart, that's what makes you right with God. So today, let's bow our heads and close our eyes and Perhaps you're here today and you've never received Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Today, we want to make sure everyone has an opportunity to get their heart right with God. Friend, let me just share something with you. That if you're running from God instead of to God, I'm talking to you. If you're not sure you want to be sure, I'm talking to you. There's going to be a day, God forbid, that happens sooner than later. But there'll be a day where you'll stand before God. And when you stand before God, God's not going to ask you about your theology. You're not going to stand before God and be judged according to your theology. You're not going to stand before God and be judged according to just your, uh, how, how, how good of a person you were. The, you know, a lot of people think, well, if I'm good enough, I'll get to go to heaven. If I go to church, call myself a Christian, I, I, I'll, I'll go to heaven. If my good outweighs my bad, if I have good works, I help people. A lot of people think that if they just do those things, they're going to be okay with God. But the Bible says that if you want to make heaven your home, you must be born again. And what is born again is surrendering all of your heart and all of your life to Jesus. And today, before the beginning of this service, and the first Sunday of each month, we take communion. On this day, we want to make sure you're right with God. We do it every, every single service. We give people an opportunity. But today is something special because we're about to take communion, and we want to make sure you're okay with Jesus. So if you're here today, you've never received Jesus as your Savior, I'm going to invite you to pray along with me this prayer, inviting Jesus into your heart. Now listen, I can lead your lips, but I cannot lead your heart. You're the only one who can do this. And if that's you today, you want to receive G Jesus as your Lord, as your Savior. See, a lot of people, they want a Savior, but they don't want a Lord. And today, my friend, He must be Lord and Savior in your life. So today, I want to give you that opportunity 
And everyone that's saved, that's born again, they're going to pray along with you, inviting Jesus into your life. Say this with me with all your heart. Say, Jesus, come into my heart. Come into my heart. I repent of all my sin. I repent of all my sins. And I turn towards you. And I turn towards you. I believe. I believe. You died on the cross. You died on the cross. And you rose from the dead. And you rose from the dead. To give me a new life. To give me a new life. And I accept you now. And I accept you now. As my Lord. As my Lord. And my Savior. My Savior. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Friend, if you prayed that prayer and you meant it with all your heart, we want to welcome you to the family of God. Amen. Amen. Well, we're going to take communion now. Now this is going to mean something special to you as it means something special to everyone else that is a born-again, Bible-believing, sanctified, washed in the blood, excited about Jesus, born-again Christian. Amen? And uh, there's some here, maybe you got born again again today. Amen? That's okay too. Hallelujah. Rededicate your life to Jesus and get your heart right. Amen? So Heather's going to read the scripture, amen, as we uh, take the first portion of our, of our uh, communion. Let's peel back the cellophane and get our, the bread ready. Need me to help you? Okay. For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus on the same night in which he was betrayed took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Amen. If you're in this place and you need healing in your body, I want to encourage you, if you can, to stand in faith as we take this part of our communion, because by his stripes, you were healed 2,000 years ago. When God heals, listen, he does not create a brand new miracle for you. He already created a miracle 2,000 years ago, and all you're going to do is reach out like the woman with the issue of blood. You're just going to reach out and receive your healing from the Lord today. And I believe this is just a trigger of your faith as we're believing God. And as your brothers and sisters in the Lord were two or three agree, touching anything, so shall it be. Amen. We are in agreement with you according to the word of God. Two or three agree in the name of Jesus. When we gather together, he's in the midst of us. And right now, in the name of Jesus, as we take this portion, Father, we thank you for Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, who died on that cross, whose body was broken, that we might be healed. By his stripes, we were healed. And today we accept our healing. We receive this healing. And Lord, I speak life over your people right now in the name of Jesus that are coming, expecting, God anticipating a miracle from you that right now, Lord, you're going to do something special, something miraculous, something supernatural in their life. And right now I speak healing in their bodies in the name of Jesus that they are healed in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Lord, for your body that was broken for us. And we do this in remembrance of you. In Jesus' name, let us partake. No valley, no gain or loss we know. Could keep us from your love. Sing no sickness, no sickness. He also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Amen. Praise the Lord. 
His blood, amen. It cleanses as it washes and delivers, amen. By His blood, your sins were made white as snow. By His blood, your name has been written in the Lamb's Book of Life and you have been forgiven, amen. You are forgiven, amen. If anybody's ever offended somebody, you know what it feels like when they forgive you. And they say, I forgive you. You know, sin actually means to offend God. And God says, I forgive you. Through the blood of Jesus, I forgive you. And if God says he forgives you, guess what? He doesn't hold a grudge. If he says, I forgive you, he's not like a man, amen? They say, I forgive you, and sometimes they just say it, but you know inside, they're still holding on a little bit of a grudge, amen? They say, I forgive you, but I'm just not going to talk to you as much as I used to talk to you. I'm just not going to call you as much as I used to call you. We're not going to hang out as much. I forgive you, but how many have ever had that before, amen? But let me tell you what, God's not that way. When he says, I forgive you, he means it, and he throws your, your sin, your offense, as far as the east is from the west as if it never happened again and he comes and he becomes part of your life and what does he say he says I'm going to come into your heart and I'm going to sup with you in other words I'm going to hang out with you still I'm going to hang out I'm going to call you I'm going to talk to you I'm going to be a part of your life I'm not so offended that I'm just going to kind of say I'm sorry you know I forgive you but 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 our relationship has been you know severed you know and right now God is saying no 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 I, I that is canceled out amen by the blood of Jesus Jesus and we are together again a relationship with you and I and we are going to walk together amen you are forgiven look at your neighbor and say I'm forgiven amen and by that blood on Calvary's cross you have been made brand new washed by the blood of Jesus his grace amen God's sovereign divine ability to get the job done on your behalf because you can't do it. Amen? That's grace. Grace is God's reward at Christ's expense. That's grace. Amen? God coming down and saying, I'm going to die for you. I'm your kinsman redeemer and I'm here to set you free. Amen? And God has just done that for us. And Father, we thank you for the precious blood of Jesus that not only cleanses but empowers us to be children of the living God, joint heirs, God, and children of Abraham that we might inherit the inheritance that is gone to Abraham now comes to us. Even, Lord, now we can accept that. And, Lord, we thank you that by the blood of Jesus we have been adopted, we have been accepted, we have been joined together with the family of God. And today, God, God, we thank you that we are cleansed, we are washed, and Lord, we are righteous in your eyes. And the righteous are, are as bold as a lion, God, because we have the power of the living God living inside of us and the cleansing ability that allows us to be all that you've called us to be. And Lord, we give you all the praise, all the honor, and all the glory. In Jesus' name, let us partake. Amen. Come on, let's worship Him right in front of your seat. It's a little place to put your cup. Let's lift our hands and let's worship the King of
won't give up praise. Hallelujah. There's healing. Amen, amen, amen. Hey, go ahead and have a seat. We have a Bible we want to give away. Amen. Imagine that, a church that gives away Bibles. Yeah, but you got to go through this class to get this Bible. Amen. We have a wonderful uh, a class. It's our SPT class, Spiritual Personal Trainers. It's actually going to be changing pretty soon in August, and we'll let you know more about that in just a little bit uh, later on in the service on where we're going as a church. Amen. How many know a church uh, that, that, that is, is on the move? Amen. We, the Bible says, listen, the, the Bible says be vig, vigilant and be sober, vi, and be sober and vigilant. Sober means active. Amen. And so today I'm going to actually be talking about that, being active, constantly going forward, amen? And, and, and see, we're, the Bible says we're supposed to be running the race, amen? And the Bible says that the devil walks. So if he's catching up with you, maybe you're not running fast enough. Woo, come on now, amen? That was for free. Oh, yeah, that's my message. I can't preach that right now. Hallelujah. But today, we want to give this Bible away. If you go through this four-week uh, uh, discipleship ministry that we have, after the four weeks, we, you graduate, and then we, we, we bless you with a brand new Bible. And today, we have a wonderful person that's graduating. I'll let Heather say her name. Yadira Martinez. Yadira Martinez. Is she here? Yeah, she's in the back. <laughs> Is she here? Yeah, she's in the back. Oh, she's on the, she's the one that's doing all your words. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. God bless you. God bless you. And, what are the, and we always say, a Bible that's falling apart usually means a life isn't. Amen. Praise the Lord. Come on, let's give Jesus a praise for that. Amen. Well, we want to thank you for coming. How many had a great uh, celebration yesterday, 4th of July? Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. And all that was, uh, excuse me, let me put that right there. And all that took place. Amen. We had a great outreach yesterday. We passed out hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of flyers yesterday. And, uh, and I told Heather, she goes, wow, it's going to be full tomorrow. I said, no, it's not. It's going to be empty. <laughs> And I said, everybody stayed up too late. They're all coming second and third service. Amen. Amen. I didn't get home till like 11 o'clock at night. Amen. Because we were outreaching and then we went in fellowship and enjoyed the wonderful uh, 4th of July fireworks. And hopefully you had a good time with your families and friends and loved ones. We even had people come and pick up flyers because they were going to a different park with their family. And so they came, picked up flyers and they passed out flyers in the Corona Park and so we're just believing God. Can you believe God with us for a harvest, amen, that people would come, amen, to this house so that they might hear the word of God? And we prayed over those flyers, and this is what I said. I said, Lord, we pass out these flyers that there might be a harvest here at the Rock Church Riverside, but Lord, we especially ask for a harvest in your house, God, that people would just come to any church, whatever. If, they, if this flyer just sparks a desire to go back to their old church and serve you, so let it be, Lord, that, that we're not into building God's house. We're the building his kingdom amen and god builds his house so we were just so, so having a good time doing that so hopefully you guys had a great time uh yesterday on uh, that celebration some people had to work amen imagine that people coming to eat fast food while the fireworks are going off i tell you what i get into it i took my camera out there i i found out it's not that easy to take nice pictures of fireworks i thought nice camera nice lens no problem and i'm going this is more difficult than it looks amen but uh, we're just having a good time uh, uh, celebrating on the 4th of July. Well, today we're going to have a great time in the Word of God and all that God is doing here at the, at, in your life. Amen. And speaking of uh, 4th of July, we have not only a freedom in our country. I tell you what, we are blessed in our country. Amen. I ran into a guy the other day and he said, oh my goodness, we are on the outreach, because I went on the outreach and as we're out there passing out flyers, a guy came up to me and, goes, and we were talking, he says, you know, we're in the end times, you know, and you heard what they did in Charleston and, and, and you know, we pray for those families and, and what happened over here and everything was talking about was happening here in America and I said, it's interesting that you're only focusing on America. I said, you know, and we talk about the end times. How many know we look at the end times, we look at the, the, the news, and we say, oh, we're in the end times, you know. And I told them this very important thing that we even as believers, as you're sitting there, you need to understand this. And this is what I told them. I said, listen, have you ever been to the Middle East? I said, you know, if you go to the Christians in the Middle East, they'll tell you they've been in the end times for the last 2,000 years. Hello? They said, you don't even know what persecution is. 
You think we're in the end times now? Let me take you where I live as a believer in the Middle East, in our country, and let me show you what will really flip your lid. Amen? Let me show you what real persecution is. It, you haven't even tasted it yet. We've been in persecution for since Jesus rose, ascended into heaven. When Jesus said, you are in the last days, he meant it. And we've been living in the last days for the last 2,000 years. Yes, it's accelerating. Yes, it's getting a little bit harder. But let me share something with you. And this is what I told him. I looked at him. I said, dude, we've been in the, la we've been in the last year since Jesus ascended. Go to the Middle East and ask them about the last days. And they'll look at us and laugh. Hello? These guys can't even walk down the street without being persecuted. These, they're taking their heads off. We haven't seen nothing yet. And I told them, I said, come on, man. I said, you know what? We need to believe God for all that God's doing. We need to not worry about that too much. Because listen, if you talk to believers in those countries, in, in, in Israel, and, and as a matter of fact, we're going to pray for someone today who's going to Israel on Wednesday. We're praying for her right now. I'm going to call her up. And, and this is why I'm talking about this. I said, listen, the, if, you, if you talk to someone in that country, they'll tell you, man, you, you have no idea what we're going through. And this is real stuff. Amen. And I said, we need to believe God. And this is the focus. If you go to those countries, they're not focused on the end times. If you go to some of these countries, they're not focused on the end times. They've been in the end times. You know what their focus is? Winning people to Jesus Christ. That's their focus. They, they don't have the seminars like we do on end times. They're like, oh, are you kidding? Let's just win people to Jesus. Amen? Because that's what it's all about. Come on, folks. Amen? I said, I, I'm not, I'm not, hey, I used to preach on end times. I used to teach on end times. I used to teach Bible college end times. And I, and I got to a point where I realized, you know what? I just need to win someone to Jesus. If I, if you truly believe, come on, let's think about it. If we truly believed we were in the end times, if as a believer, you truly believe that this is it, Jesus can come back any moment, any second. Come on now. If we really believe that, we would be out there telling someone about Jesus, excited, on fire, running around saying, oh my goodness, he's coming back. Hello? Amen? But we, we, we people, the, the believers will talk about it, but they're not actively doing it. We're in the end times. Well, if you really thought that, why aren't you out running around telling people about Jesus? He's coming back. Oh, I tell you what, when I first got saved in the 80s, we thought he was coming back the next day. We couldn't go anywhere. We, we told people about Jesus in the in, in and out hamburger parking lot. Amen. We told people about Jesus in Stater Brothers. Amen. I'd go to, through the in and out drive through I'd go up to get my burger, go to pay and say, before I give them my money, do you know Jesus as your Savior? Guess what? They're not going to go anywhere. I put my flyer with the money. Guess what? They're going to take the flyer because the money's with it. Amen. Because we believed it was happening right now. And knowing that in my heart and, and feeling that in the sense of urgency of the hour. Come on now. We're in the urgency of the hour. And that urgency is getting out there. Amen. To this day, I still have an urgency. I still have a fire. That's why on 4th of July, I'm the first one there. Amen. I'm there with my box. I'm ready to pass out flyers because there's an urgency in the hour that Jesus is coming back. And I still have a fire for it. Amen. Because I want, when I stand before God, I want him to say, well done. Well done. Well done, good and faithful servant. Amen. Amen. And you know, sometimes I have to sacrifice my desires for his desires. That's what witness means. You know what witness means? Witness means to be a martyr for him. To you lay your life down for him. To say, none of me, more of you. Not less of me and more of you. None of me and all of you. Amen. Well, listen, we have our sister, Nora. She's going to be going to Israel Wednesday. Nora, would you come up here? Amen. And Nora's like, I don't know, because what she, they're doing is they're going to go there to convince the, Jew, the, the Israelites, the Jews, not to leave because ISIS is threatening them. And so she's going with a group of people to convince the Jews to stay and stand their ground and believe with them to keep their place. Amen? Amen. And she came up to me and goes, I don't know, I'm a little nervous. I said, you ought to be nervous. I'm nervous for you. <laughs> Amen? That takes a fire inside. That takes a real desire to know that the end is near. Amen? Amen. So come on up here, Mama. We're going to lay hands towards her.
Let's pray for Nora as she goes. It's Wednesday, right? Wednesday. Wednesday. Oh, my goodness. She just told me today. She said, Pastor, I'm going to Israel on Wednesday to convince the Jews to, uh, to stay in Israel. And ISIS is persecuting them, telling them they have to leave. And we're going there to encourage them to stay. Amen. A whole group of them are going. And I was just like, wow. Now, that's heavy. Everybody say, wow. Wow. Say it again. Wow. Wow. Amen. Father, I thank you for Nora. And right now we speak a hedge of protection over her. I thank you as she goes to Israel, Lord. That as she goes, she is a beacon of light, of encouragement to our brothers and sisters. We thank you, Lord, for those in Israel, God. We lift up Israel right now, Lord. As we pray for Israel, we thank you, Lord, that the nation of God, that the people of God, Lord, that you have called them, God, that they are your chosen people and we join together with them. And we say in the name of Jesus that your blessing be with them. And as Nora goes, that you begin to do a mighty work, a mighty thing. And we speak angels of protection over her, God. We ask you, God, for your mighty power and anointing of the Holy Ghost upon her in the name of Jesus, that no weapon formed against her shall prosper. And we thank you for your mighty work in Jesus' name. Come on, folks, let's give her a praise. Let's give him a praise. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. God bless you, Nora. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Go in peace. Amen. Hallelujah. Isn't that exciting? Amen. Amen. Well, today, guys, we are just excited for the word of the Lord. And uh, I, pro I, I promise that God's going to speak to you today in a way that's just going to challenge you and set you free. Hey, man, how many know we are free in Christ? Amen. Amen. Father, we thank you for this service. We ask your blessing on it. We thank you for the word of God. We thank you, Lord, as we minister the word today, God, that, Lord, we don't come to hear from a man. We come to hear from the Holy Spirit. So, Holy Spirit, have your way. Teach us, lead us, guide us, and direct us. And all that the Father would have us to know so that we could be what the Father's call us to be. And not only us, Lord, we lift up all the churches that are preaching the gospel in the Inland Empire, Riverside, Orange County, all around the world. And Father, I thank you in Jesus' name that if you, as you minister your word to your people, let them just walk in complete victory each and every day of their life. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, guys, let's open our Bibles to John chapter 8, verse 36. John chapter 8, verse 36. We are just so, so, so fired up today. I don't know about you, but I'm fired up. Yeah, yeah. Amen. If you need some coffee, go get some. Because we're going to get excited today. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. John chapter 8, verse 36. Very short scripture, but has so much packed into it. Amen. It's a power-packed scripture. Everybody look at your neighbor and say, this is a power-packed scripture. I only hear this side talking. I never hear this side talking. Everybody say, this is a power-packed scripture. All right, guys, come on now. I'm an old children's pastor. I've got to get some. Amen. You've got to give me some. Amen. Help me, somebody. Help me. Amen. <laughs> All right, John chapter 8, verse 36. Listen to what it says. Therefore, everybody say, therefore. therefore. You know why it says therefore? It's there for a reason. Amen. Amen. The Bible says, behold. Everybody say, behold. behold. Many times you hear those words, therefore, you'll hear the word behold. Amen. The reason why it says, therefore, because it's there for a reason. Amen. When it says, behold, that means grab onto it. Don't let any devil in hell rip it out of your hand. Amen. Behold it. Grab onto it. This one says, therefore, if. Everybody say, if. If the Son makes you free, you shall be. You shall be free indeed. Now, I know we say it. I know we shout it. I know we believe it sometimes, but not all the time. Amen? Come on now. The Bible says, therefore, if the Son makes you free, you shall be free. How many know God's not a liar? God's not a liar. He said, you're going to be, you are free. You know, when, when in the Bible, back in those days, and especially in Leviticus chapter 25, verse 8, I'm going to read it to you in the Living Translation, but in the Bible, they talk about a year of Jubilee. Everybody say Jubilee. 
Now the year of Jubilee was a wonderful year. Every 15 years they would gather together and the Bible says, uh, uh, excuse me, every sab uh, seventh Sabbath they would, they would basically have a year of Jubilee. On the, sev the seventh Sabbath year there would be the year of Jubilee. What did Jubilee mean? Well, I'm glad you asked because I'm going to read it to you. It says, in addition, in Leviticus 28 verse 8, it says, in addition, you must count off seven Sabbath years. Seven sets of seven years, adding up to 49 years in all. Every 49 years, excuse me. So it says, then on the day of atonement, on the 15th year, blow the ram's horn loud and long throughout the land. Set this year apart as a holy, as holy, a time to proclaim freedom throughout the land for all who live there. It will be a jubilee year for you. When each of you may return, when each of you may return to the land that belongs to your ancestors and return to your own clan. This 15th year will be a jubilee for you. During that year, you must not plant your fields or store away any of the crops that grow on their own and don't gather the grapes from the unpruned vines. It will be a jubilee year for you. And you must keep it holy. But you may eat whatever the land produces on its own. In the year of jubilee, each of you may return to the land that belongs to your ancestors. So on this jubilee year was a year where all debts were forgiven. This was a year that if you were unable to take care of your land and you had debtors and you were not able to keep your land, you could sell your land off to somebody and serve that master, serve that person on your own land, but someone else would own your land. And you would sell that land to them, but it wasn't truly a sell because they couldn't keep it forever. It was kind of like a lease. They could take your land, they could, that would be your debt, and they could pro make pro money off your land and do all that stuff. And then what you would do is you would serve that master on your own land so that you could live there, but it was owned by someone else. So guess what? They reaped all the benefits and the profits of the land. And that's how it worked out. But on the 15th year, every 15 years, the year of Jubilee would come. And that year of Jubilee, all of a sudden, everybody that had land that they had, to get, they, they had to give to someone else because of a debt they owned, they got everything was forgiven and all their lands were returned to them. He said, my people will never be without a land. In other words, you're still going to get your land back in 15 years. You're going to get this. It's going to happen. And, and, and so, so don't worry. So, so everyone returned back. Everything was returned back. And then I was reading this on this year of Jubilee. 50th year, excuse me. And, and so every 50th year this would happen. And then what happened here is that, 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 that all the lands would be returned to everybody. It was called the year of Jubilee. You know what they did during that year? They celebrated. Yes. Debts are forgiven. Everybody's, everybody gets their land back. Everybody's having a good time. Why? Because my debts are forgiven. Come on now. How many have ever had a debt before? How many got a debt right now? How many have had a debt and then, you know, you, you're going to lose your house because of this debt. You're not able to pay your mortgage. And then the bank comes and says, I'm going to forgive you, you know, $50,000 off your mortgage and we're going to lower it down. And you're paying. How many have ever had that happen where they took away? Anybody in here? Where they took that away, they brought it down, amen. They forgave you of a certain amount of money. How many know that made you feel good? Amen. See, one of the greatest emotions is relief. It's going, oh, they forgave me of my debt. Guy's going to go to prison and he's, gonna, he's facing the judge and the judge looks at him and he says, you know what, we, 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 we canceled it out. You know, you're, you're not going to jail. You, there was a, some mistake in, in the process and you're, you're, you're forgiven. Go on, be your way. How many know you'd be celebrating that day? You know, you got that phone call saying the debt is forgiven. How many know you'd be happy that day? You'd, you'd not be hanging up the phone saying, yeah. They forgave their debt. How many know you'd be going, woohoo! Yeah. Come on! It's celebration! Let's have a party! Amen! Come on now! I would say, have a Mexican party. Yeah. <laughs> Any excuse to celebrate, you know? 
But this is a celebration. Oh my goodness. Now, now this is where it gets really interesting. During those years, while your land is being is sold, during those years, what happens is a, a relative, if you had a relative that was able to purchase the land for you, that would be your kid. It was actually kind of their responsibility to be the kinsman redeemer that would actually come and buy the land back for you and, and, and then it would be your land again. That was called a kinsman redeemer. And so that was what, what we hear the story of, a, of, 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 of Ruth, is, is, is the kinsman redeemer. And here, we, here, here they are in this land, and they lose their land, and, they're, and, the, and the people would hope for a kinsman redeemer, or they would have to wait till the year of Jubilee. And this is where it gets really exciting is that when Jesus Christ came, He came and He died on the cross on the year of Jubilee. So He dies on the year of Jubilee when our land, when our, our, the, the, what was the promises or, the, or, the, or the, the benefits of our ancestors should have been returned back to the people. Jesus comes and dies on the year of Jubilee. Here's where it even gets better. Not only does He die on the year of Jubilee, He's the second Adam, which makes Him a kinsman redeemer. Come on now. So not only did he, did he come and he, and, he, and he died on the cross for, for on the year of Jubilee, not only was that the, the year that your land should have been returned to you, he came and paid the price for you as well as your kinsman redeemer. Why? Because he was, he was just like Adam. He was our ancestor. Amen. So Jubilee in there in that time was not just Jubilee. It was the Jubilee of Jubilees. I don't hear everybody get excited about that. It was the year, the jubilee of jubilees. So when Jesus came and he died on the cross, not only were your debts forgiven spiritually, oh my goodness, hey man, that promises of Abraham, amen, that you are blessed coming, blessed going, you've been engrafted, it all gets returned back to you, and the promises of God are now your promises. That's the year of jubilee, amen. We ought to have a jubilee dance, hallelujah. Jesus came to pay that price so you and I can be set free. But only, not only be set free, but have the promises of God given to us. We ought to even celebrate a little, a little more. Because of that cross that he died on, and because of that price he paid, you have been accepted and engrafted into the promises of God. So not only do we get our sins forgiven, we look at uh, the, the, the promises and the, and the, the inheritance of, our, of, our, of, uh, of the children of Israel, and we think, well, how, how is that going to affect me? Well, then Jesus turns around and says, you have been engrafted into the promise. So not only are you forgiven, you get the promises of God too. Whatever was promised to, to the children of Israel now promised to you. Bless coming. Bless going. Bless in your storehouses. Come on. Woo! Whatever you put your hands to, you prosper. Amen. Bless in the field. Glory to God. I tell you what, we ought to be celebrating because why? You have been grafted into the promises of Abraham according to Galatians. The promises of Abraham are now bestowed upon the Gentiles as well. So not only do we get freedom in Christ, amen, we get a great big blessing. Amen. And we're forgiven. And this is a cool thing. If a kinsman redeemer comes and he purchases the land for you, the debt, pays the debt for you, the, the previous slave that was a slave to that, that, that person that they were indebted to, the, by, the, the Word of God clearly says that that slave that was once a slave to someone else must serve the kinsman redeemer. That's why Paul can come and say, I am a bond servant. I am a slave to Christ. My kinsman redeemer paid my price. And now I serve him. Amen? That's why we say that I'm going to serve the Lord. Amen? Because he's my kinsman redeemer. I owe a debt I could not pay. And he paid a price for me. Amen? And you've been set free by the power and the blood of Jesus Christ. Galatians chapter 1, I mean 5, Galatians chapter 5 verse 1 says this. Stand fast, therefore. 
Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty by which Christ has made you free. You know what stand fast means? That means hold your ground. That means stay your place. That means you stand there. This is my stand your place. Amen? Stay there. That belongs to you. It says stand fast, therefore, in the liberty by which Christ has made us free. And do not be entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Romans chapter 8 verse 1, it says, There is therefore now no condemnation. Everybody say, no condemnation. Amen. Why do we keep condemning ourselves? Why do we keep beating ourselves up? Why, why, why do believers constantly keep tearing themselves down? Why do believers constantly going from victory to defeat, victory to defeat, victory to defeat, victory to defeat, victory to defeat? Come on now. We go from week to week, victory to defeat, week to defeat. We're like bipolar Christianity. Amen. It's like we can't make up our mind if we're victorious or defeated. One week we're victorious. Amen. Oh, come on now. Sometimes we, we are so excited when everything's going well, and then we beat ourselves up when, everything, when something doesn't go right. Oh, God didn't bless me. What am I doing wrong? He didn't do nothing wrong. He loves you. He cares about you. Come on now. We're all excited one week, down the next week. Up one week, down the week, next week. You know, sometimes what happens is the things that get us down, when those things get you down, you need to really pay attention. Because sometimes when, 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 when certain things get us down and we're looking at it and we're saying, man, you know, uh, uh, this got me down. I'm down. I'm bummed out. I'm broken. Sometimes we got to be careful with that. Because sometimes we give the devil our phone number. We give the devil our phone number. We tell him what works. We say, devil, if you dial this number, it's going to work every time. See, sometimes you just got to clown the devil. You know what that means to clown somebody? That means you do something, they, they don't understand why you're doing it. They can't figure you out. So when things are down, you just walk straight up. I'm going to serve God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Car broken down. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. The devil's like, he's confusing. <laughs> Things aren't going wrong. Praise the Lord. God is good. I'm going to get up and go to church anyways. Amen. I tell people that all the time. I say, well, haven't you been in church? I haven't seen you in church. Oh, I've been going through stuff. That's a little confusing. That's like not going to the doctor when you're hit sick. Come on. Amen. You go see the doctor, your arm's been broken, sticking out, bones sticking out, all busted up. Walk into the clinic for a cough, bones sticking out. They're like, how come you're not here for that? Oh, I don't know, it hurts. <laughs> Sometimes what happens, we're going through stuff. We're going through a lot of stuff. So what we have a tendency to do is we want to just stay home. Instead of coming to the household of God, lift up our hands and rejoice and sing. That's why they call us a sanctuary. Amen. Jesus said he went to the temple often. Amen. We go through stuff. We want to back off. And you know what happens when you do that? You just gave the devil your phone number. You just told him what works. Oh, that'll work. Oh, that works. Okay. It's kind of like the husband and wife that come to church sometimes. They had the cage fight in the car. You know, sometimes you got to fake it till you make it. Amen. How, or, or, or and let's get a little more Pentecostal. You got to faith it till you make it. Amen. I've seen it, man. I've done it. I've done it before. Cage fight in the car on the way to church. You know, kids are acting up. Husband and wife disagreeing. Pull into the parking lot. Everybody. You got the head usher outside. And you're like, <laughs> he wants to walk in your car. Great, here he comes. <laughs> Kids behave. It's like, looking at your spouse, she's looking at you. Get out of the car. Hi, we put our Christian face on. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Come to church, praise and worship starts. We put our hands up. Looking at each other with those faces, you know. <laughs> you're like, oh, you're not worshiping in spirit and truth. You're right. 
But amen, sometimes I just got to do it anyways. I'm just doing it. And then little by little, the presence of God starts to come down. Amen. All of a sudden, it's like, hi. <laughs> She's like, what you looking at? <laughs> All of a sudden, things start changing. The atmosphere begins to fill the place. Amen. The presence of God begins to come and begin to move on your heart, move on your spouse's heart, move on your children. Amen. And you're thinking, oh my goodness, it's so good to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. And you walk out and praise the Lord. The pastor's preaching on evangelism. And you walk out because you don't come to hear from a man. You come to hear from the Holy Spirit. Amen. And you walk out, pastor, preach on evangelism. You walk out saying, thank you, pastor, for preaching on marriage today. Because the Holy Spirit's been speaking to you. Holy Spirit's been talking to you. Next thing you know, you're fired up. Amen. Amen. Now, in a, in a different situation, we're on our way to church. Forget it. We're not going to church. Go home. Guess what's going to happen next week? On the way to church? Ah, forget it. We're not going to church. <laughs> because you, we just gave him his, our phone number. We just told him what works. Sometimes you got to clown him and say, you know what? Forget you, devil. You're not getting me down. See, the Bible says we wrestle against, we don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers and principalities of darkness. Amen? Did you know that most believers never even get to principalities? Most believers never even get to powers. Most believers never even get to darkness. They never even get to those levels. They're too busy fighting with flesh and blood. Come on. He offended me. Oh, I'm not going back to that church because that usher offended me. That's flesh and blood. Amen? Most believers never fight powers of darkness. They're, 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 they're stuck in flesh and blood with each other, with their, with their spouse, with their, with their families. They're, they're wrestling flesh and blood, and then they, they never even get to that. Oh, the devil's attacking. No, not the devil. That's flesh and blood. That's people. You got what I'm saying? That's a whole different message. Amen. I'll save it for later. The men got that. Amen. Once. It says, there's no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit of Christ, Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. You are free. Your past no longer holds you back. Amen. Your failures are under the blood. Your setbacks are now can be your comebacks. Your tomorrows will be better than your yesterdays because you've been set free. It's time to let go and be free. Amen? You know how they catch, you know how they catch a, 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 an elephant? You know how they, how, they, how they keep an elephant? Have you ever seen an elephant? They'll have a little, little a stick in the ground, a little peg in the ground. They have a little rope and that elephant won't even bother to move. Because when that baby elephant, you see it at a circus and places like that, the circus kind of learned this a long time ago, that when they got an elephant, when it was a baby elephant, they drove this metal stake into the ground, deep into the ground. There was no way to pull it out. And they put a big, huge chain on that baby elephant's leg. And so when that little baby elephant tried to pull his leg, he couldn't do it. Couldn't pull, he couldn't pull that stake out. And as months went by, as years went by, he, conv he was convinced that that stake, he couldn't pull it out. He was convinced that that stake was stronger than him. And then later, whenever they would travel, all they would take is a little stick and they would just tap it into the ground. And they would put a little, little rope, just a little rope on his leg. And pretty soon this elephant would grow and it'd be a huge animal. Thousands of pounds. An animal that's so powerful that it can tear a tree and break a tree in half like a toothpick, like nothing. But they would put this little peg in the ground and they put this little rope on his leg. And guess what? He's convinced that I cannot pull this peg out of the ground. You know, sometimes we have been convinced that we cannot pull those pegs out of the ground that keep us down. I always wonder sometimes what peg is in the ground that's keeping you down? That you have been set free. You have greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. You have a, a, a great God living in you. You have the power of God living in you. You have the ability of God living in you. You have been set free. Amen. 
But many times that peg that's in the ground is still keeping you down. Amen. The peg of bitterness and unforgiveness is still in the ground and it's keeping you ground. Yet you have the ability to rip it right out of the ground and be set free. Amen. The, the, the peg of past regrets, the peg of pain and past regrets is in the ground. And you've, you've convinced yourself that I cannot pull it out of the ground. And these pegs keep us bound. Jesus says you've been set free. You've been set free. You've been set free. Amen. The, the stake of past hurts and pains no longer hold you down because you have the power of God living in you. You have been forgiving. The stake of defeat that's in the ground no longer holds you bound because you are more than a conqueror. The stake of failure in the ground no longer holds you down because you are not a victor. You are not a victim. You are a victor. The stake in the ground that's holding you down no longer controls you. That stake that's in the ground of past hurts and pains no longer holds you down because you've been given a new heart. And the old broken heart has been removed. The heart of stone has been removed. And you have a heart of flesh that has been placed in you. You are free in Christ Jesus. And today, who the Son sets free. Therefore, if the Son makes you free, you shall be free indeed. Amen. See, sometimes we just got to have the ability to know that that and convince ourselves that does not hold me down anymore. There are things we got to let go in our life. It's like how they catch a monkey. They take this little coconut and they, they tie a, a chain to it and they tie it around a tree and they put a little hole in the coconut. And the hole is just big enough to put your hand, the monkey to put his hand in the coconut. And they'll put a little treat in there. They'll put something in there that gets, his, that gets his attention. And he'll put his hand in there to get it. But when he grabs onto it, he can't pull his hand out because he's made a fist. And he's holding on and he can't, and he can't get his hand out. But he's convinced that he, not to let go of what's holding him bound to that coconut. And all they do is come and swoop him up and put him in a cage. That's how they catch a monkey. And I wonder how many uh, a believer is still holding on to unforgiveness. They're still holding on to pain. They're still holding on to hurts. They're still holding on to failures. And if they just let it go because they know they're free, they just got to let it go. They'll be able to pull their hand out and be set free, completely free. Amen? Because we're free, but we need to be completely free. We're free here, but are we free here? Amen? We know we're free but are we actually walking free? And I believe that's the word of the Lord for you today. Come on, let's give Jesus a praise. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. If you got something from Jesus today, let's bless him.